more car talk. Uh, this one is my um, final kind of uh, chapter by chapter, not chapter by chapter, but kind of section by section uh, um, discussion about Sometimes You Have to Lie, uh, the um, biography of uh, Louise Fitzhugh, auth rebel author of uh, uh, Harriet the Spy. Uh, this is the final, final chapter, chapter, I think it's eight, chapter 18 and the afterword. Uh, and then, uh, after that, then tucked very, all the way at the very, very back of this ebook are, are photographs and, um, and, uh, kind of notes on sources and author's note and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it is, it's, it, it, I, I, uh, well, A, let's just say, um, you know, it talks about the circumstances of Louise Fitzhugh's death. And kind of get into that. Um, it definitely uh, becomes more of an open text at the end that this is indeed a book that is um, on one side of a bit of a battle of how to frame Louise Fitzhugh. Um, basically, has how the book portrays it. Uh, Louise Fitzhugh was in a relationship with a woman called Lois. Lois, oh, I won't even try and remember what her last name is at this point. Uh, but Lois had certain views of exactly how uh, Louise was going to get presented after her death. Uh, this book kind of presents, and I, probably kind of a general idea I can see, is that they kind of, re they, they didn't mention anything about uh, Lois's um, uh, sexuality. Uh, they didn't, uh, were, didn't, were really interested in trying to release um and any of her unfinished manuscripts uh, that were more uh, uh, more uh, targeted at adults, um, you know, um, kind of very very protective. I mean, it's one of those things of you uh, you do get you know people in charge with kind of protecting the legacy of of a loved one at the end it can oftentimes be you know a lot more a lot more conservative than what you know the creative author would be who you know was made their bones basically by being um groundbreaking by being kind of kind of taboo breaking uh by um pushing the envelope uh you know uh and you know just the the, the it seems like the pattern of how louise did her uh, lived her life is that she found partners who were kind of nurturers her what people who could take care of her while she was the artist uh and um not surprisingly uh the woman who's who ended up kind of in charge of her estate who was the heir to her estate who that um that uh louise decided to ma made a will sa saying that you know, giving her, giving her control, uh, with someone who is going to be conservative, um, and, you know, has not been open to, um, biographers. That's, that's the other thing that comes out in this is, a uh, is a, the, the, the estate's not interested in particularly in biographers or only wanted, uh, like a scholarly biographer kind of came, came to them and she did get a little bit of access to stuff, but, uh, their support got withdrawn because she wasn't a big enough publisher. Um, at least that was, that was, uh, what was put forward as, as the reasons why support was withdrawn and other, other people have been rebuffed. I'm assuming that means Leslie Brody herself, she doesn't say it explicitly, was rebuffed. She didn't get access to, uh, various things. There's maybe some journals that, uh, Louise Fitzhugh wrote, um, when she was in therapy, uh, and, uh, various other things like that. And there's, you know, various manuscripts that, uh, um, they did actually hire someone to kind of go through and look at, but, um, you know, uh, the sport was forwarded, but a lot of the other ones actually were judged by the person that they brought as not, you know, unfinished and not really publishable as they are, you know, maybe they'd be, you, there'd be things that you, you would give access to, um, biographers to have a look at, but you, you, they weren't, they weren't, you know, something that works that could stand on their own, which is, you know, is fair enough. Um, we get, we get the circumstances of Louise Fitzhugh's death, which I'm smiling because, uh, it gets sort of, it gets framed as she was, um, putting out, um, uh, she put out her, the final book that she, she published in her, in her lifetime, 
uh, which was um, your family is your your family is never going to change or family is never change. I can't forget forget the title of it, which is all about a kind of a is a black kind of upper upper middle class family where uh, the girl goes to the same school as uh, elite school as uh, Harriet and her crew went to, um, but um, she. Um, it's it's depicted as she got a bad review in the publisher in Publishers Weekly, which sort of called her a bit of like you know that she was um, out of date, that it was like you know so, so, something to that thing of like oh maybe time had passed Louise Fitzhugh by, and that this really hurt her it really hurt her and she started drinking and she was drinking, uh, and um, you know she had a night of drinking and then she woke up the next day with a terrible headache. Uh, and pretty quickly was in a coma, uh, in the hospital. Um, you know, as, as these times are, uh, no recognition of that, you know, Lois or anyone or any, you know, was a, a you know, an actual, uh, family member. Was, she was just treated as a friend and as such had pretty limited access to her in the intensive care, in, in the intensive care unit. Um, Alixi who uh, was uh, a woman that she was in a uh, kind of basically a, a, a marriage, a, you know, marriage um, because you couldn't get married for a good damn long time after that was uh, also couldn't get access. Um, and so, you know, she, she died, she died, but I, I smile because it's just like, Oh, so we're going to blame this on a negative review that she died. It's like not kind of, you know, a underlying health things because, you know, aneurysms that could just, that could happen to anyone or her own, um, not taking great care of herself, uh, drinking, um, weight, I don't know, weight problems, but just not a healthy, not, didn't, doesn't sound like particularly a healthy person, someone who had like battled like high blood pressure, uh, you know, I, you don't want to get into the kind of whole moral things of if you've done all this, you would have lived. So you're a bad person for dying. But it's also, it's like, well, the reviewer who didn't like your book just didn't like your book. So I don't think we're going to, we're going to count that as, I mean, um, as the biographer, as the one who's like totally in, uh, Louise Fitzhugh's, uh, court, you got to then say, oh, but after that, 10 days after her death, all the positive reviews came out. So, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like one of these, like whether it's a great book or not, it's just like, um, uh, Louise Fitzhugh, I think does definitely strike me as one of those authors who, uh, super prickly, super, you know, kind of an, you know, an angry person would not, you know, uh, she was fuming about negative reviews for Harriet and wanted to respond to them directly. Uh, but thankfully was talked out of it and didn't have something easy like Twitter nowadays to uh, sound off because she would have totally been one of those authors who would have made an ass hat of themselves screaming at reviewers online. Um, when, you know, obviously being quiet and letting your work speak for yourself, uh, is the, is the, is the most powerful rebuke that you can ever do for something like that. Um, and also just sort of letting the people who love your book trumpet your book f to the rooftops. Whereas when an author trumpets their book to the rooftops, it just comes off as a, as an author of like, yeah, of course you're in love with your work. You're, 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 you're a giant ego man maniac and you should be a giant ego maniac to be able to have the force to, to push your work out. But, um, you kind of got to get it, get out of the way of your work and let people examine it. So, um, yeah, that was, that, that, that was just like, kind of like, oh, okay. Okay. We're, we're definitely coming from the, um, the, uh, the author point of view here, bad reviews killed Lee Louise Fitzhugh and not, uh, you know, the aneurysm that killed Louise Fitzhugh. But yeah, it was also just interesting that it's like, Oh, we, we, this, um, this partner before, uh, Alixi, Alixi, A L I I E A L X I E. Um, is definitely kind of taken as, um, this is, she, she knew the real, uh, Louise Fitzhugh, uh, the, the kind of the edgy risk taker, not the Louise Fitzhugh who wanted to get a, got a place in the countryside, um, and had kind of settled down, was still being super creative. I mean, her, her, these works seem to be like quite political works. Um, you know, your family is never going to change even, um, sport, which was unfinished or, 
are, well, not unfinished, but wasn't published in her lifetime, are very political works. She's still kind of groundbreaking, but, um, you know, she, a lot of people were calling her Willy. She had like a, she, she, she had moved into a kind of a different sub, different group of friends. Um, and, uh, there definitely seems to be a little bit of hurt from what are maybe more socially, more, more, um, more, uh, culturally with it, more, uh, friends back in the city who have got more oomph to be able to kind of push their point of view, their Louise. Uh, so there's a little bit of, uh, I don't know if butt hurtness, but a little bit of like, you know, battle over which Louise there is. She's a multi-dimensional person. She could be both. She could definitely be both. Um, you know, there was a lot of kind of a thing of like, oh, we're not talking about her sexuality, but Louise Fitzhugh doesn't seem like she was very an out person, but she was also a person who was very adverse to, um, to, uh, wanting to talk to the media, uh, and, um, wanting to be a public, you know, this whole thing of being a public person was not her, not her deal. So I can see why, um, you know, somebody who's preserving her legacy might be like, no, you can't have that part of her. Um, you know, you know, it's, it's one of those things of, you know, they, they, they would have to decide. Um, but, um, yeah, it was a really good biography because even though I do think it was, it's, you know, it's very much, uh, wanting to push kind of like a, a, a certain view of Louise Fitzhugh, which was like an, in, it's interesting. It's, and it's, and I think it's largely kind of an accurate one. Um, it, it's also, she's a prickly person. She is someone who you don't, you're not going to like, uh, uh, it's not someone, she's someone who you, you could see just easily just taking a dislike to you and telling you to fuck off. Um, she would be, she's, she's prickly, angry, uh, hard to edit. Um, she, she alienates, you know, she was, she, she had tossed off the, uh, original editors of Harriet the Spy, um, as not being sympathetic enough, not, not basically, you know, give, daring to give her criticism. And she really, she couldn't take that. She couldn't take that. Um, so you can, and you know, she put aside manuscript of sport, uh, because, you know, uh, the editor had some suggestions and it was like, nope, nope, <laughs> I'm not going to do it then. And she, so she put it aside. So it only got pulled back out again after she died, um, to, to get, to get done. So that's, that's, that was, that's, that's, it's, it's interesting. You can see why, you know, she, she, she got, she did what she did and it was quite, ama it's quite amazing, but also maybe why this wasn't someone who, if, if she was going to have a continuing to have a, 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 a she was going to continue having obviously a creative career. She, that's what she was built for, but it wasn't going to be a big mainstream career which is, would be fine, which would be fine. It would be, uh, it's a really shame that she didn't get, uh, the chance to continue on perhaps to, she had this kind of ambition to write for adults to do painting. Um, I can see why we don't get any of those paintings because I'm assuming that they are probably fall within the copyright of the Louise Fitzhugh estate and they were not going to give that. Whereas if you're quoting from books, uh, you, you know, you don't have to get you probably don't have to get those permissions. You're doing a review, so you don't have to, uh, you don't have to, you don't have to do that, but uh, it would have been nice to see her paintings. Um, but that seems to be a part of her output that the uh, Fitzhugh estate isn't that comfortable in, um, uh, allowing out. I did a web search trying to find, you know, is it, can, can I find the paintings online if I can't find them in the book? And I didn't, I wasn't successful. So I don't know if they're out there somewhere, but, uh, yeah. So those are my, those are my impressions at this point. I will let it percolate and then I will do a proper, proper full review, full review of the book as the alarm oh, goes on and then goes off. All right. More videos later.